welcome back. And as was pointed out earlier in the show, our first conversation for today is with Hugo Juarez Carrillo, Counselor in Legal Affairs uh, and Press from the Embassy of Mexico to Belize. Good morning and good welcome. Morning, how are you? It's good to have you here. Thank you for the invitation. Actually, we are very glad to be here. Uh, as you know, uh, we've been uh, working hard since uh, sep last September mm -hmm. uh, because uh, we are celebrating the 31st, 35th anniversary of uh, the diplomatic relations between Mexico and Belize. Yeah. And in, in this frame, we've, uh, we've been working this year and actually we have uh, uh, three events today, in one today, in this moment okay. uh, at the embassy first. Uh, uh, with cooperation with the Nietzsche and the Museum of Belize and celebrating the 25th anniversary of uh, the museum, mm -hmm. we have a um, photograph exposition there. We have a, uh, uh, 16 uh, um, photographs of uh, a uh, Mexican photographer. Her mm -hmm. name is Marta Sanchez Renero. And uh, those photographs are uh, linked with one of the of the um, collections that now are exposed there at the museum about the slavery in Belize, mm. and uh, this is uh, these pictures are about the Mexican African community in mm. uh, right now yeah. in the modern times. Um, as you know, uh, slaves came from Africa from to all over the continent, and uh, Mexico was not an exception. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, uh, it's very interesting because. These communities has, have been um, secluded yeah. for centuries, and they kept a lot of their, their own um, cultural customs. Mm -hmm. And especially they are located in the states of Ver Veracruz, mm -hmm. Guerrero, and Oaxaca, yeah. close to the coasts, but in the mountains. Yeah. The, the, the collection is named uh, El Cimarron y su Fandango, mm -hmm. uh, the maroon and his uh, pest, we could say. And uh, well, it's very interesting because mm -hmm. on the 6th, this photographer is coming to, to uh, Belize in order to uh, present a, a workshop for Belizeans that want to know about photograph mm -hmm. from uh, beginners to experts. They can go to the embassy, to the institute. We're starting at uh, 6 p.m. on the 6th, and it's going to be a five days um, five days, uh, this is about the, the Cimarron, yeah. uh, five days uh, workshop. And then it's going to be very interesting book because she's a, a very, very good photographer. She's yeah. been working a lot of time with, with us. That is such a fantastic opportunity. I think yeah. so. I think and so. the work will still be on display. Of course, we the, have one of the Yes, the work is on display till April the 15th. Okay. Then you have two more weeks in order to go to see her work. Yeah. And uh, uh, beginning the, the 6th of April, she's starting a workshop yeah. uh, at the Institute mm -hmm. at 6 p.m. Please contact yeah. us, the same number, and uh, we will be very glad to... to it's well, better to reserve a spot, To right? reserve a spot. Yeah. It's free. It's free of charge. But uh, you can bring your camera, your phone. Mm -hmm. It's not... There is not a lot of requirements. Yeah. But right now, everybody's a photographer. We, yeah. we take pictures all the time. Not and everybody is a good photographer, but we're all photographers. We all are photographers <laughs> and we can be better photographers. Absolutely. It is a, a way of doing it. Yeah. And the third thing that we have right now at the Institute is in collaboration with Oceana. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a, a very, very, very interesting exposition about the uh, art made mm -hmm. with trash. Yes. Uh, as you know, Oceana is always pushing all of us, mm -hmm. in order to uh, have a conscience about the pollution that we all create and finally get to the seas. Yeah. And then they, what we, they did is uh, to collect uh, the work of 18 uh, artists, mm -hmm. Belizean artists, and uh, from all the, the, the ways of life, from very young uh, kids mm -hmm. to uh, well, very well-known artists. Yeah. Then you can go to see uh, how they have used trash in order to create beauty. Yeah. It's uh, interesting, it's a way of uh, 
remembering us that uh, yeah. well it's not that trashy the trash that we, <laughs> we throw i know i love finally. i love the name of the exhibit the exhibit it's is called lone ras uh that's very belizean and i don't understand it very well trashy <laughs> art. i know uh, i noticed you're a bit nervous to say the word um but actually and i think it's a great education opportunity for people too because lone ras is the name of a fish as well so uh, they get away with it for that purpose. <laughs> but it is ultimately, I think, uh, uh, to be able to spark uh, the conversation as to or participation in damaging or marine resources. Now, what, what's your reaction of the work that you've seen in, in this exhibit so well, far? I love it. And the thing is that you see uh, a beauty, beautiful... Look at uh, that. Uh, this is my ambassador. Yes. And, uh, Ambassador and the fish. <laughs> uh, and the fish. This fish is incredible. Yeah. If you see it, it's created only with trash. Mm -hmm. Everything is trash. It's uh, from uh, CD, old CDs to small uh, cups of plastic, mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the tops of, of bottles. Everything is trash. And uh, you can see that this. Wow. Really, really beautiful. Yeah. Some forks instead of the teeth of the of the yeah of the of the fish. And well. Uh, this is a great opportunity for us. Yeah. I really believe that uh, it's incredible when you see a, a, one of these pieces and then you get closer and you see that it's maybe a half bottle of uh, milk <laughs> that is being uh, transformed in a face. Yeah. It's, it's, it's beautiful. I yeah. think, uh, uh, one, uh, the conscience is important, mm -hmm. but two is to, to promote art. Mm -hmm. And to see that you don't have to, to, to be uh, a very wealthy person in yeah. order to create uh, sculptures or, or paintings. No. You can do it with a very, very limited uh, mm. uh, uh, budget. Yeah. And, uh, well, and be creative with what you exactly. find. Exactly. That's yeah. the, the most important thing. You see how, how creative uh, children and yeah. people in Belize can be. And uh, this is something to be proud uh, yeah. of. And uh, we have re been receiving uh, schools that come to see the, 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 mm. the, the exhibition. And it's not a bad idea. I yeah. think uh, you can go any time, 9 to 5, mm -hmm. to the institute. And we will be very happy to, to open the doors for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, if your school organiza or organization is interested in doing something, an, a visit, we can uh, arrange it with Oceana in order to have people that really knows about the, 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 these issues, <laughs> not only us, we are not <laughs> experts in other everything. Than, other than you then your staff and saying, look at this fish. <laughs> look at the, this beautiful fish, exactly. Now, Hugo, I think uh, you started off pointing out the celebration of 35 years of what we could call a very good relationship between Belize and Mexico. Um, we have seen over the years a, a heavy emphasis on the arts, and I, and I think it's a beautiful, um, a beautiful complement of, of, of sharing cultures and also being able to help us understand uh, how Mexicans view their life and how, and vice versa. When you look at what uh, areas you want to work on, like you look at the photography exhibition and bringing in uh, these photos of the Afro-Mexicans. Um, how do you make these decisions as to what will work best and appeal to the Belizean public? Well, you know, we are not that different. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, if you analyze the, the people of Belize and the people of uh, Quintana Roo, uh, Yucatan, we are very close. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, the the way that uh, the migrations have come to to Belize are the same ways that migrations get to Mexico. Yeah. The Lebanese community in the southeast of Mexico is so so uh, so uh, old and, and important. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, it was a very interesting uh, situation to see that the same migration of Lebanese people came to to Belize, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, the Mayan people that uh, is in Mexico is. In Belize too. Yeah. For them, this uh, border that we created, this Rio Hondo, uh, that uh, is not a way of separating us, but is a way to connecting us. Mm -hmm. Then uh, uh, the the important part is to try to find the spirit of mm -hmm. that unite us. Yeah, uh, could be for us very 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 weird, by example, to bring some I don't know uh, biking art mm -hmm. to Belize would be interesting, but it, this is not that, that uh, 
something that uh, uh, is going to connect both countries. Yeah. We have to find common denominators mm -hmm. and try to bring them here. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, we are <laughs> we are always in a, a economical hard situation. Then what we have to do is to to be a very creative in order to use the limited budget that we have in order to bring the best yeah. that we can get. Yeah. Fortunately, we are a uh, in a border country to Mexico, and uh, we receive a lot of help mm -hmm. from. Uh, the states uh, that uh, are close to Belize. For yes. example, the state of Quintana Roo is always helping us in order to, to get uh, some artistic uh, representations and, mm -hmm. uh, well, they do it for free. Yeah. They borrow us their resources mm -hmm. and we very gladly come to show it to, to, yeah. to Belizean uh, people. What has been the reaction so far of the photography exhibit? Interesting. Yeah. Interesting because uh, we have received the calls not only from uh, people that do not know anything about it, but uh, about very well uh, recognized Belizean journalists yeah. that are interested in coming and get a... Maybe they're not uh, photojournalists, mm -hmm. but finally in, uh, you have to have resources and yeah. sometimes you travel alone mm -hmm. you don't have the chance of have a cameraman or a photographer with you and then this is a way to, to uh, enrich your own work yeah. then it's gonna has been a very interesting one I'm very interested in, in going yeah. to you're going to learn some skills too? I need to. <laughs> <laughs> I need to because you know we have uh, these uh, two um, pages of the embassy mm -hmm. in uh, or uh, web page yeah. plus or facebook Book. page and our twitter page and uh, i'm trying to get constantly good pictures in order to attract people and see the information that we have here and the photographer uh, mara sanchez renero she'll yes. talk about we have here the, the flyer up it'll be five days so it's not just a one-time no, no 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 yeah. no it's five days that uh, is not uh, going to repeat the same yeah. thing the five days is a progressive thing yeah, yeah. So we're going to look at camera techniques, storytelling through pictures, exposure, lens, light, and composition. Yes. Now, how did she offer to share her skills with uh, the Belizean public and for free? Well, uh, uh, she, she's part of the, the group of artists that uh, are part of the offer that the, the Mexican Foreign Affairs Office have. Yeah. Uh, we have a, a large number of expositions around the world mm -hmm. going from country from country actually her her uh, uh, work came if I don't remember bad she's uh, is coming from Trinidad and Tobago okay. from our embassy there and then uh, well uh, the thing is that uh, she loves her work yeah we are exp in the exposition exposition we're looking to what she's doing, yeah. and uh, she do it uh, very gladly. I mean, yeah. another thing is that uh, Belize is in a very exotic mm -hmm. uh, place, and uh, people is very interested in coming to see Belize. So when what you say is please Belize? come to Belize, yes, it's we, easier. It's, it's, it's <laughs> well, of course, and uh, we, she will have uh, the, the company of the people of the embassy in order yeah. to, to show her the uh, good things that uh, Belize have. Yeah. And then uh, for a lot of people, it's a, a very nice experience to come to Belize that, you know, it's so close, but at the same time, it's yeah. not very uh, known in Mexico. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, and the, the photography exhibit that she currently has on display, mm -hmm. let, let's talk a little bit about uh, the Afro-Mexicans. And I think you, what you said is, is very true in the very beginning of, of the segment that many people aren't aware uh, of the African roots throughout this hemisphere. In fact, uh, the Afro-Latino uh, movement is one that has been picking up uh, a, lot of, a lot of traction and people, Latino people are speaking out and saying, you know, we do have African roots and we embrace it as yeah. well. So let's talk about uh, what the Afro-Latinos are like in Mexico sure. and uh, just the recognition of uh, the ancestral roots that they have. Well, you know, Mexico is not a, a homogeneous, as neither is Belize, no. a uh, demographically speaking homogeneous country. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, we are a country where mestizos, 
the mixture of uh, Europeans and Indians mm -hmm. uh, is are we are the majority. Yeah. But at the same time, we have very important um, uh, populations from other ethnic, uh, uh, other ethnic uh, origin. For example, uh, we still have more than 10 million Indians, pure Indians, mm -hmm. living right now in Mexico and speaking more than 50 different languages. Yeah. Uh, my own uh, grandfather, he was a pure uh, mestizo Indian. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the thing is that uh, you could see that in, her, in his birth certificate. Uh -huh. uh, when you go to, the, to those uh, three states, yeah. uh, uh, Veracruz, uh, Oaxaca, and Guerrero, Guerrero uh -huh. uh, you see that they have a very large mountains, mm -hmm. <coughs> very high mountains, and uh, very very harsh terrain. Yeah. And uh, what happened is that uh, the the uh, African population came <coughs> as slaves in order to substitute the number of Indians that died mm -hmm. because of hard work and because of diseases. Mm -hmm. uh, when Mexico was conquered in 1521, and uh, there was like uh, 30 million people living in what we call Mesoamerica. And uh, when uh, we uh, got our independence in 1821, we were six million people. I mean, the number of diseases uh, was yeah. horrible. Then um, the conquerors needed uh, uh, strong people mm -hmm. to come to work. And they came uh, through the slaves' uh, ships to, to Veracruz and uh, were dispersed it through yeah. all the country. But especially in those three states, they, they were able to, to run away. Mm -hmm. And they created their own uh, uh, villages. Yeah. That right now, by example, in Yanga, Veracruz, you go to Yanga and you see that uh, they, they speak Spanish and they, they eat uh, Chilean frijoles, as, mm -hmm. and they love tamales, but they have their, their own uh, cuisine, they have their own customs, they have their own way of living. Uh -huh. Very Mexican, but, but at the same time, uh, adding this uh, difference yeah. to them. Yeah. One of the pictures that you can see there is the grand, 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 grandson of a person that was the first one that uh, brought weed mm. to, to Mexico. The first person that cultivated weed in Mexico. Oh, marijuana? Was, yeah, no, no, no. no oh, the, weed? Uh, yes, uh, trigo. How do you say that? Uh, wheat. wheat. Sorry. Wheat. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little confused my bad. for a my second. My bad, I'm yeah. sorry. Trigo. Yeah. No, no, yeah. wheat. Wheat, uh, wheat. wheat, yes. Yes, I don't, mar I don't know marijuana. <laughs> I think that uh, is older than that. But anyways, uh, the, he was a, a African guy yeah. that came, was the first guy to, to, to cultivate it in Mexico. Yeah. And he remembered that. And that's something that uh, is not very well documented. Yeah. Then uh, her work makes a effort in order to yeah. remember us that uh, we're not alone. Yeah. We are, we have these roots. Mm -hmm. And when you say, well, yes, but how many they are? Mm -hmm. they, there is a 1.2 million people, wow. uh, Mexicans, that identify themselves as Afro. African origin. Yes. Then uh, for us it's very important. Yes. It's very important yes. in our history. And I think the key part in, in Mexico specifically is where the different cultures are a bit further away from where we have access and perhaps that's why they aren't, we, we aren't as exposed uh, to the different ethnicities that are present. The Indians, for example, are more south, uh, Veracruz is on the other side uh, of, of, the, the, of Mexico. Yeah. And uh, so I think people don't always know that these cultures do exist within Mexico. It's true. The, uh, we Mexicans don't know exactly uh, who we are. <laughs> because if, uh, well, by example, you mm -hmm. know which is the, the main clientele that we have here in Belize? Mm -hmm. Are the Mexican Mennonites that came to, to Belize uh, starting the, in the 1960s. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are the, the, the main group of Mexicans living in Belize. Wow. And they're Mexicans. I mean, you don't have to be uh, brown skin as I am mm -hmm. and uh, uh, curly hair and uh, like I am uh -huh. in order to be Mexican. You can, you can be blonde, yeah. uh, you can be uh, of Arabic descent, mm -hmm. or you can be as white as, as a Mennonite. Mm -hmm. Then uh, to be Mexican is more than ethnicity. Yeah. It's uh, much more about uh, yeah. culture and... Uh, yeah. and um, identifying yourself uh, with this cultural group. 
Well, I love that, that uh, this exhibit allows us to be able to see that. And as I watch this photo, this could easily be uh, a Garifuna elderly woman on a beach in Hopkins, you know? Absolutely. It, the dress. Yeah, the, the dress. dress, the landscape a bit. Yeah. Um, and it just shows how even though we separate ourselves by culture, um, by countries, uh, there's so many similarities within our cultures. And it's great to learn about them. Uh, how long so. will this uh, this exhibition exhibit. is going to finish on the 15th of As well. April. Okay. Yeah. So you can have uh, both experiences when you get there. You can check out Lone Ras and you can check out the unknown world of black Afro-Mexican. Yes, and uh, we're very glad that we've been uh, uh, collaborating uh, very close to, with the museum that actually we, we helped uh, 25 years ago to, to, to build exactly, in, yeah. in that uh, old jail that is a beautiful building actually. It was one of the I don't know, the, the prettiest buildings in, in, yeah. in Belize city, not standing the origin of, of it. Yeah. Then, uh, yes, you can have both experiences and, uh, well, we're very glad to, to, to work with them, with Niche, yeah. that close, and with Oceana. Yeah. And uh, once again, the uh, photography course, tell us a bit more about that. Well, and the photographer herself, yeah. Call us uh, to that number and... Uh -huh. uh, uh, reserve your spot uh, in in this uh, place. If we're going to start uh, the six for five days, we're going to have this experience. And mm -hmm. uh, well, the photographer is a very well-known photographer in Mexico, mm -hmm. and uh, you will have the chance of not he having only the theory, but uh, some many very practical uh, use of uh, your camera. If you have, mm -hmm. if you are as I am an old-fashioned person with a camera, uh -huh. or with your own phone, that uh, actually they, they have so good cameras right now, so good lenses that yeah. you, don't have, you never know that you're using a, a, a when you see a picture is yeah. being taken with it. Yeah, you don't phone. know it's a mobile phone. Yeah, these phones that we don't use anymore to talk. <laughs> now, uh, the, uh, the course you said is over the course of five days. Does it continue through the weekend? It's five days continuous? Yes, uh, the, um, not on the Sunday, but on the Saturday we will okay. be So it'll be Thursday, yes. Friday, Saturday, and then resume on Monday. Exactly. Oh, great. Are you planning to have an exhibit out of uh, the class? Well, it's, uh, uh, we haven't uh, uh, talked about it, but mm -hmm. it's a very good idea. Maybe okay. you can go and we can have uh, some pictures taken by uh, Mar Marlene Cuella. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I need a bit of work with my photography skills. Uh, I think uh, you're, uh, you're going to be amazed that, yeah. that uh, after receiving the information and yeah. the techniques from a professional, how Im uh, improved can be your work. Yeah. Now, Hugo, what else uh, is, is on the horizon for the Mexican embassy at this point? Well, actually, we are uh, preparing ourselves in order to, uh, to participate in the Jazz International Jazz Festival ah. of Belize. We're bringing a, a duet from uh, uh, Mexico City, mm -hmm. and uh, the, we are promoting among the uh, cinematic community in Mexico to come to participate one more year in the Inter Belize uh, film. In, uh, film Festival. Mm -hmm. uh, we have been doing that for many years and uh, again, it's for them a very nice experience to come to present uh, their work to a country that is close to us, but uh, that uh, is not that uh, uh, well known in Mexico. That's something that we have to work in. We have to work in uh, making Belize one of uh, these uh, places that you want to go for a weekend or for a long vacation. Okay. All right, Hugo. Well, we appreciate you stopping in and telling us all about what's happening at the uh, Embassy of Mexico. Of course, it's at the Mexican Institute in Belize City. Well, not only uh, here. Yeah. Actually, last year we, we had uh, exhibitions and work mm -hmm. in CIF in five different communities, mm -hmm. in San Ignacio, in Benque, in Orange Walk, in, in, in the Corozal. We are trying to be not only in Belize City, but in Belmopan and in the rest of the country. Okay. 
And uh, we want to say once again that Lone Ras exhibit, uh, the exhibit of trashy art yeah. uh, being done in collaboration with Oceana is still on display until April 15th. No, all, uh, this is uh, until May the 7th. May 7th. Yes. And the uh, photography exhibit yeah. of the unknown world of uh, Afro-Mexican exactly. um, is on display. That's till April 15th. Yes. And the free photography lessons, courtesy of uh, your visiting photographer, Marta Sanchez Renero. See, um, begins on Thursday night yeah. at 6 p.m. Yes. It is free, but uh, you are encouraging everybody to reserve their spot. Please call us, and uh, we're very glad to, to have your spot there. Yeah. All right. Great. Well, thank, thank you. you for being with us. Thank you for the invitation. All right. Let's go ahead and take a break. And we'll be back in a few. Stay tuned.